Although it's a, a really tough thing to build, to build an ethics program bottom up, you need to be able to establish first the tone at the top. That is the most critical aspect and is the linchpin of building the entire program. Uh, without that ethics program starting at the top, it doesn't matter how much your employees want that ethics program to be able to do the right thing, to be able to do not only the legal thing and the ethical thing, because it will get stopped somewhere along the line. So it is tremendously critical to have the tone at the top. And then to engender with the entire population, whether you're talking about members, customers, suppliers, um, potentially uh, governmental agencies, and to understand what their needs are to be able to build an effective program for your target organization. Ethics is on a little bit of a higher level than compliance. Compliance can simply mean uh, compliance with rules, regulations, and the legal environment that that particular organization finds themselves in. Retail, for example, you have to make sure that your products are healthy, clean, and don't affect the environment. That can be the basis of an ethics program, your compliance program. But ethics are so much more than just focusing in upon the rules, the regulations, and whatnot. It's very important to be able to step up into the ethics program because it's directly affected to what the organization believes in as they go forward um, selling products, uh, marketing goods and services to uh, the consuming public. I love Costco's Code of Ethics. I'm a little bit biased because I was a Costco employee and that's where I got my start. But they made it extraordinarily clear, not only to employees, but also to the membership at large on what the organization valued and how they were going to build that ethics program from there within Code of Conduct, making sure that, for Costco's example, they took care of the members very well. They took care of their employees very well. They respected their vendors. And ultimately, it comes down to building up that ethics program to be able to deliver shareholder value. And that's something that Costco, if you take a look at their stock price and their history, have done decade over decade, going back to, I believe, 1976 in San Diego under Saul Price. I love the ability to train individuals for ethics. It is critically important from an internal auditor, fraud risk management, and information technology auditor perspective to be able to get that training in, whether it's me or from human resources or from an external person, to be able to show what ethics looks like. Ethics can be very, very fuzzy and uh, nebulous. It, it isn't very clear. And to be able to put effective and efficient ways to execute that are very, very important. And that's one of uh, the linchpins in addition to having executive buy-in, executives popping in during the training um, becomes a very important opportunity to be able to sell ethics within the organization. The biggest thing, at least in my view, is a bona fide, true, no retaliation policy. Um, it, it can't be just a policy that human resource uh, dictates and local management doesn't enforce it. If the home office ends up finding out about any type of retaliation, it is up to the home office to be able to uh, find remediating steps, not only to make that particular sentinel whole, but also to correct the problem within management that caused the problem in the first place. And the most important thing that I need to mention on uh, uh, sentinel or whistleblower sentiment is good faith. If it's in bad faith, that's a completely different story altogether. But by far and away, something on the order of 80%, 8 out of 10 uh, whistleblowers, are not influenced by bad faith. They're influenced by a true desire to help the organization because they see something wrong.